Hi, I'm Abram Thau, Solutions Architect at LaunchDarkly. If you're already familiar with our feature management capabilities, then you probably know how great flags are for developing new features and decoupling deployment from release. But in order to make the best use of feature flags, it's also important to plan for their end of life. Today, I'm going to talk about our best practices for how to improve your flag hygiene in order to keep your code base clean and reduce technical debt by archiving those temporary flags when they've served their purpose. We can divide feature flags into two broad categories, permanent and temporary. Permanent flags act as control levers for your application over a long period of time. These can be flags for entitlements, load shedding, kill switches, etc. But temporary flags are only intended to have a limited lifespan. Once the flag has fulfilled its purpose, it's time to remove it. The first step is proper planning. By extending your team's definition of done to include archiving those temporary flags that are no longer needed, you'll never be at risk for those old flags piling up. For example, you create a flag to help you develop and roll out a new feature for your application, allowing you to have that feature code deployed to production, but hidden from your users until it's ready to go. Then you start rolling out to small segments, maybe starting with your QA team, then your beta users, your early access users, and finally opening it up for general availability. Once you've validated that things are working smoothly, it's time to retire that flag. By making flag removal part of that final sign off for the feature's work ticket, you'll know that you won't be accruing any technical debt from your flags. Or some teams prefer to have dedicated flag cleanup days at a cadence that makes sense for your workflow. Then we have the question, how do we really know when it's time to remove a flag, when it's ready to go? In LaunchDarkly, we have tools to help you evaluate which flags are no longer needed, and some of those checks can be automated. Here we are in the LaunchDarkly platform, and you can see I have a project with some flags in it, and we're going to see which flags are ready to be removed. At a glance, you can see that some of the flags are showing what their evaluations have been. If I just hover over, we can see this one hasn't been used at all yet. This one is showing that it's evaluated to several different variations. And these two, just by hovering over them, we can see that it's been serving just a single value, which we would consider a launched flag. We can find that more easily by using filters. If I click on the environment, in this case, production, filter by status, and I can select launched, which means that it has had evaluations, but has only been evaluating a single value for the past week. Click there. Great. So this is the best for if you have a long list of flags, you want to be able to find your launched flags really easily. And we can see that these two are considered launched. In the past seven days, we have been serving just a single value, in this case, uh, 1.8 thousand evaluations just showing the single variation here. In this case, show theme switch versus disable theme switch. So this would be a flag which is enabling a new feature, and now we are no longer even considering uh, disabling it, so it's time to remove it. In order to make this workflow really convenient, we can also save this view. So instead of having to go into the filters and select launched every time you want to see which flags are ready to remove, we can click this icon up here, Save this, I'm going to save this as launched. And now that shortcut is right here. So regardless of what else I'm doing in LaunchDarkly, I can always click this to come back to this exact view and see which flags have been launched and are therefore ready to remove. This is just to make the whole thing much more convenient. Here we are in a different project. And since we've already just seen how to identify which flags are launched and therefore probably ready to remove, we're going to dive into one of these flags and see how we can identify where in code we need to remove references to it. So I'm going to click on this flag and over on the right hand side here, we can see I have something called code references set up. This is a great command line tool called LaunchDarkly code refs. You can run it manually from the command line or integrate it into your CICD process, which is the recommended way to do it there. That way you can just on every pull request, run the command line process and it'll go through your repo, look for any references to flags from this project, send those references back to the LaunchDarkly platform and collect them here for you. That way you can easily see where in your code base references to this flag still exist. 
you can pop back over to your IDE, remove any reference to this flag, and then you'll know that it's safe to remove from the LaunchDarkly platform too, because we always want to remove them from code first and then archive them here in the platform. And now here we are to look at this flag here that has been launched, cleaned up from code, and now we're going to talk about removing it from the LaunchDarkly side. If we hover over it, we can see, yeah, no evaluations in the past seven days. Uh, it has not been encountered by any of our users in the wild. Very good indication that it's probably ready to remove, but of course, use your best judgment for your code base and your, your applications. If we click on this here, we can see, yep, no code references. So that is fantastic. That's what we want to see for being ready to remove here. And now we're going to archive it. I'm going to click on settings up at the top right here, scroll all the way down, and you can see archive. There are some built-in checks to the archival process as well. So we can see that this flag is not a prereq for any other flags. Great. It's been serving the same uh, variation. Great. Has not been evaluated in the past seven days. Fantastic. So I'm going to say, yes, this flag is ready to archive so we don't have to see it in our flag list anymore. Ready to archive. For safety, type in the name to make sure we are archiving the correct flag archive. And this flag will no longer show up in our flag list unless we specifically look for our archived flags. You can also see that we can restore this flag very easily just by clicking the restore button. So if we archived it by accident, if we find we archived it and someone says, actually, no, I still need that flag. I'm planning to use it for something. Great. We can undo that really easily. No harm done. Delete is very different. Delete will actually delete the flag. It will no longer be accessible anywhere. It is absolutely gone. We really recommend that you only use delete if you actually created a flag by accident. You know, you want to go create a flag, you create the wrong type of flag, you know, permanent versus temporary, a Boolean flag versus a string flag, things that can't be changed later on. And you're like, oh, no, I accidentally did this the wrong way. Let me just wipe that out. Try again. That's what delete is really for. It's best to leave archived flags archived, just so you can always go back, look at what flags you had if you have a reason to do so, and restore it if there's a reason to restore it. If we come back to my flag list, you'll see that that flag is no longer visible here. And if we go into our inactive flags, yep, no longer visible there either. But if we want to be able to restore some flag, we can go, instead of showing our live flags, we can show archived. And yet yeah, here are all of our archived flags. We can always bring them back if we need to, or just take a look at what we were doing. You'll notice that there's this little pop-up down here saying remove, or sorry, review other flags that are safe to remove. And we're going to jump in and look at what that means. So if I click on this here, it's going to bring us to our engineering insights view, which you can also get over here. But let's just click through. Here we are in the engineering insights for this particular project looking at flag health. And as you can see, we only have one active flag right now, no stale flags, meaning inactive flags. And so things are looking great. I can come up here, jump back to this project as a whole in our engineering insights and see what the activity has been from a flag point of view here, how often we deploy, uh, changing a lead time, looking at deployment issues. It's a really great resource if you have access to engineering insights. I'm going to jump over to the other project that we started with earlier. Here we are back in our project, and we just see all of our archived flags because we selected that filter. Let's restore the one that we just archived so we can see what this looks like in engineering insights. We can click restore right up here or go back to our settings. I'm just going to click Restore here, leave a little comment, click Restore. Great, flag restored. Go back to our flag list, and here it is. Now if we go back to our Engineering Insights, we should see a still flag there, which is going to tell us, yep, yeah, down at the bottom here, we scroll down, stale flags. We have two flags, one is stale and one is not, so we have a 50-50 ratio which is okay, but we would like to improve this. So this is just a great way to see, okay, we have a big project, lots of flags. 
uh, easy to lose track of things. Engineering Insights will give you this little window into how are we doing percentage-wise? What percent of our stale flags, or what percent of our flags have become stale and are still hanging around? If it's getting too high, then maybe it's time to dedicate some engineering resources, tell someone, hey, go use that inact use that launched filter, use that inactive filter that we have saved already. You can go clear this out and get rid of all these old flags that are hanging around. You may also want to reevaluate your engineering processes if you find that you do keep ending up with a lot of stale flags. So again, like I said earlier, changing that definition of done to make sure that you are archiving your old flags or having more frequent uh, flag cleanup days just to make sure that you don't end up with a lot of buildup and having heavy tech debt hanging over your team. So we've seen how with just a little bit of planning, LaunchDarkly makes it easy to limit your flag-based tech debt by removing them from your code base and the LaunchDarkly platform. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful and I hope you have a great day.